<sighs> okay, this is taking me a lot of courage to come out and say, and I know this will get me a lot of hate coming my way. However, I thought it was best I be honest with you all. I love Has Been Hotel. Despite some issues I have with its story and astronomical plot contrivances, this show still rocks. When it fails in some writing aspects, it makes up for it with its characters, world building, and tone. But most importantly, the songs. The songs are the most praised and notable thing about the show and for all the right reasons. They're not only extremely catchy, but they're also expertly crafted to support the show's writing. And today, I'm going to be ranking all of them. Not only based off of pure enjoyment, but how much the songs do to strengthen the core themes behind their respective characters or story that the show is trying to tell. And you know what? I'm also including the pilot songs. I feel like the pilot doesn't get enough credit, and it feels wrong to not include the work of these talented people that were recasted when the show was officially announced. Seriously, go watch the pilot, it's literally on YouTube for free. Fuck it, I'm linking it in the description. Give this entire cast the recognition they deserve! <clears throat> Anyways, let's start the list with... Something tells me that today will be a happy day in hell! Okay. This song has such a smart way of introducing us to Charlie's character and her motives. Happy Day in Hell is whimsical, cheerful, and has such an upbeat tone for a song talking about literal hell. And the show knows it and doesn't hide that fact. Charlie sings about how great hell is and how she can change heaven's mind about the extermination. But she chooses to ignore the terrible state it's in and the refusal of people wanting to change. She's not oblivious to all of this, but she does try to push past all of it because she's that hopeful of her has-been hotel. The song does an incredible job at telling us exactly what type of show this is going to be, what type of character Charlie is, and acts as a building block for the whole season. So, a nice opening song with some incredible vocals. My only issue is that Vaggie's part isn't really needed, it honestly makes the song sound worse in my opinion. That and compared to mostly every other song on this list, it just doesn't hit as hard to me. So, Happy Day in Hell is going in B tier. A good opening song, but a very baseline song when it comes to the standard the rest of show set for the songs. I know it's just been a week, but we'll be back in six months! And just like that, Happy Day in Hell has been overshadowed by this song in the same episode. Which is convenient considering that this song is meant to overshadow Charlie in her attempts to redeem sinners for her hotel. This song just fucks so hard. Like other songs in the show, this is the song where you randomly blurt out a verse because of just how insanely catchy it is for so many reasons. Not only is this total whiplash from Happy Day in Hell in a stellar way, not only does it have bombastic lyrics and visuals throughout the rest of the song when Adam interrupts, but it is sung by Alex Brightman. Alex goddamn Beetlejuice, stick it to the man, Lawrence the Keys! Brightman. This man is an absolute legend, and his vocals in this song heightens the lyrics tenfold. The lyrics are incredible too. It has so much personality and says so much about how heaven truly functions. Lyrics like Cause the rules are black and white, there's no use in trying to fight it. And Extermination is entertainment. Say so much so quickly about the stilted society heaven is and how antagonistic Adam is. There are a lot of ways to have an incredible introduction to a villain, and this is by far one of the best ways to do so. Granted, the first bit where Charlie sings is forgettable because of the rest of the song, but that's kind of the point? It is ingenious to have Charlie revise Happy Day in Hell, only for it to be completely forgotten about by the true start of Hell is Forever. Alex Brightman kills in every role he plays, especially this song. Which is ironic, because if I had a nickel for a TV show that killed Alex Brightman, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened more than once. Hell is Forever is absolutely going in S tier. I gotta send a message of who's really in charge of things now! <laughs> Wait... This is the song where Vox and Alistair Shippers came from? They fucking hate each other here! Stayed Gone is the first duet in the show and is one of the best. Vox and Alistair's rivalry purely exists from off-screen stuff, but this song does a great job at bringing that to life. During Vox's part, he's able to insult and berate Alistair for how cowardly and outdated that he is. However, when Alistair comes into a song, it's very easy for Vox to get silenced and interrupted, adding more depth behind a rivalry. This is also supported by the contrast of Vox's and Alistair's part. 
Vox's part is faster, flashy, with harmonies to support his vocals, while Alistair uses his charisma and charm without help to show off how dependent Vox is. It's a unique song that builds Vox and Alistair's rivalry into a catchy and witty song. But at the same point, it uses the song to show off how terrifying Alistair is as a character. Alistair's always been a character where everybody says that he's bad news or how he's the most dangerous demon in hell, but the show doesn't really emphasize on this until halfway through the season. However, this song does fix it by adding the ending bit where he transforms with lyrics that support how menacing this character is. I think that Save Gone is a great baseline of where the standard for the song should be. It's not actively trying to be the best song of the show, but it is trying to excel with its unique style, vocals, and lyrics. So with that, Stayed Gone is going in A tier. It starts with sorry. Aww, I kind of like that song. I hated that song! I will fuck you too, Nifty! This song, honestly, isn't that remarkable. It's not offensive or anything, I don't have a lot of problems with the lyrics or anything, but as a song itself, it just isn't super entertaining. It's kind of one of those songs that works for story purposes, but doesn't work that much when it comes to the melody. It starts with Sorry is just... kind of there. I do love Serpentis' parts and the cut into Vaggy and Angel Dust. Then again, Alex Brightman just has this energy of overtaking whatever song he's in. The animation is also on point. I like the little detail of the beat matching Serpentis' eye blank, Charlie's pink dust that changes the color of the room, and the montage of Pentis' crimes that he wants to move on from. I also like that the whole premise of the song is there to say that Charlie isn't the character to instantly forgive. She's willing to let others in and show them the true path to redemption, but she's not naive enough to act like the flaws don't exist, and this song perfectly shows that. Like I said, this song works in accordance to the story, but it just doesn't have the sauce. I'll put it in B tier, right before Happy Day in Hell. Charlie, come on, we need a bit more from you here. Your songs have been oddly mid. Velvet is such a non-character that I somehow love within a minute and a half. Her snarky attitude is so entertaining in this song because she can back it up. She even expresses how she is the backbone of the V's, and how the overlords have been washed out by the V's because of their cowardice and old ways. She effortlessly calls out the overlords with the fact that the exorcists can be killed, to the point where Carmilla refused to give a solid answer and ended their meeting. While Velvet takes over most of the song, Carmilla is also great in this too. Her vocals are definitely one of, if not the best, in the show. Oddly enough, I see a lot of people finding her songs to be the weakest in the show, which, yeah, I can get by, but you cannot deny how beautiful and powerful her voice is. And her brushing off Velvet's comments and resorting to insulting her and the V's proves that Carmilla is hiding something. It's so interesting seeing Velvet back someone like Carmilla into a corner in the song. The song overall is snarky, catchy, and engaging. And a productive meeting! A little detail I like is that the instruments completely shift when the verses switch between Carmilla and Velvet. I adore duets for utilizing the instruments like that. Respectless is going in A tier. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I was about to go in here, talk about how mid whatever it takes was, and how it wasn't a good song, but mainly good for the story. Then I listened to it again. And again. And yeah, fuck it, that's going on my Spotify. And who's to say who'd survive the fray on my Damn it, whatever it takes is a really good song. It's a lot slower and has a very unique melody as opposed to the rest of the songs in the show. And I think that's why it works. It shows just the amount of variety the show can have, and it works. Everyone's vocals is astounding. Even Zestio, a character that we know fuck all about, still has a pretty damn soothing voice. Carmilla and Vaggy, though, sell their song with their vocals. There's something about Carmilla's voice and just the slow rock melody of the song that just makes me feel good. I could truly understand Carmilla's want and needs in this song. This shows that she doesn't want to start an all-out war for the purpose of protecting her daughters. She only killed an exorcist because she had no other choice. She's actively refusing using her own weapons to Hell's advantage because of the risk it would lead to losing the people close to her. And that's incredibly presented through her vocals and the lyrics. And my god, Vaggy needs more to sing in this show. This show really denied Mirabelle from singing more than outside duets. Even still, she's great here. This duet oddly works because it connects Carmilla and Vaggy in an interesting way, which helps strengthen their interaction later in the season. 
They both want to protect the ones they love, just in different methods. I didn't think these two could make such a powerful duet song, but they did. Also, how the fuck did I not figure out Baggy was an angel? It's literally in the lyrics! Please tell me I'm not the only one who missed this. Whatever It Takes is far from my favorite song on the show, but fuck it, I'm a Carmela Carmine apologist now, A tier. What's the worst part of this hell? I can only blame myself. All right, so quick warning, this section is going to involve references related to abuse, drug addiction, and other topics that are rather uncomfortable. For those of you who wish to skip this section, go to the next chapter. Oh, and uh, Poison is in S tier, by the way. No. If you're still here, I had to spend a few days away from writing the script because this is such an important song to me personally. And given that notion, you can already tell I think this song is my favorite. Everyone knows that this song is good and one of the best in the show. So while I could talk about how disgustingly beautiful the visuals are, the raw emotion behind the lyrics, and an incredible performance by Blake Roman, I think I'll review this song a little differently. What makes this song work as well as it does is that there's no lesson to learn. Angel Dust doesn't use this song to grow as a character. It's been a natural progression over the course of the season, more so a masquerade. However, he doesn't grow in this song. He doesn't learn anything. Though it is a first step because he vents. He lashes out in this song not only the torture he's experienced, but the torture that he has allowed to put himself through. It's clear that Angel is beginning to regret the choices he's made, but feels as though there was no escape from it. And to properly express this anger, sadness, guilt, and fear, he sings. Yeah, I know it's poison, you're feeding me poison. And using the musical format to present all of these real emotions in such a bombastic manner is very telling for what the song is trying to convey. And that is that it's okay to break down. While I can't exactly relate to everything Angel Dust has gone through, I can definitely understand the raw feeling of needing to let out all of their frustration. All their pain, all their suffering, everything, in such a haunting yet beautiful manner. And again, while this doesn't fix Angel's problems, the song does show the positives of releasing all those negative emotions with such maturity. You are allowed to break down. You are allowed to talk about the hell you've endured, even if it's inadvertently your fault. It's okay to say how much you're hurting. Just remember to find a reason to keep going. If you are a victim of abuse, physical, mental, or sexual, I hear you. You aren't broken, you aren't the problem, and you are not a burden. Your pain does not define your life as long as you don't let it. Okay, so this section was going to be very emotional for obvious reasons and definitely doesn't have that levity that I want in my videos. So if you need time to process, this is your chance. Pause the video, get up, do literally anything besides watch this stupid YouTube video for a little bit and come back when you're ready. Okay? Okay. Back. Back to the stupid YouTube video. Two bros singing in an alleyway, five feet apart cause they're not gay. Lose a Baby is such a relief from Poison. It is such fun with bright colors, exciting visuals, and my god does Keith David go insane in this song. This duet is one of, if not my favorites, for a multitude of reasons. First of all, the contrast from the start of the song to the rest of it is genius. It's a nice way of Husk telling Angel that he's fucked up, but isn't alone. It hits similar emotional beats to Poison, but with such levity and lightheartedness, and it works. Blake Roman and Keith David's voices work perfectly with one another. I can't necessarily explain it, but they harmonize on a level that no other duet in the show has been able to do so far. When Angel finally joins in another duet, the song cranks up to an 11 and it just keeps getting better and better. From the comparisons of what mistakes they've made, to coming to understand each other, to this exciting conclusion where they dance together under the billboard. The song knows how to perfectly develop these two characters' dynamic and their relationship with one another. They begin begin to finally understand each other, and knows that while they're imperfect, they can at least be imperfect together. Lose a Baby is the best duet in the show, and is definitely going in S tier. 
<laughs> Looks like you could use some help from the big boss of hell himself. I've known Lucifer for less than 10 minutes, and I've learned everything I need to know about him in the first 15 seconds of the song. What a goddamn entrance Lucifer has in the song. His first part of the song is not only entertaining, catty, and with fantastic animation, Lucifer's character is perfectly described. The precursor to this was knowing that he hasn't been around often and doesn't connect with Charlie as much as he wants. But his first part of the song shows that when he is involved, he gives it his all. He practically takes over everything and tries to give Charlie all of hell itself. But then, the song takes a 180 as Alistair tries to manipulate Charlie into trusting him more, since he's actually been around when she needed it. All for the purpose of just fucking with Lucifer. Also, just for the weirdos who ship Alistair and Charlie, and yes, this is a real ship. It's a little funny. You could almost call me Dad. While this rivalry duo doesn't have much charm or as wit as stayed gone, it is aggressive. There's just so much power in Alistair and Lucifer's parts that make this rivalry take off in such an intense way. Though I do have to deduct points for Mimsy ruining this song, and no, I don't hate Mimsy as a character, I just hate that Mimsy interrupted the song. Regardless, Hell's Greatest Dad is going in S tier, right above Hell is Forever. Okay, fine, Charlie, you can have a good song. Honestly, this is a song I didn't originally pay much mind to. Not that it was a bad song, I just never thought much of it. Then I found myself unintentionally singing to a song in the car while legitimately crying, and then I finally understood. First of all, fuck Jeremy Jordan has such a beautiful voice. Second off, I think I just love how much of a first step this is into developing Charlie and Lucifer's relationship. Lucifer finally opens up about how much he doesn't want Charlie to be let down the same way he was. That while he hasn't been around, it was because of his fear of disappointing his daughter because of how much he's already disappointed others. It's clear from the song that he does love Charlie, but so much that he's allowed himself to become distant and overall distasteful towards Charlie's hotel. But it's not until Charlie's part in the song that he's finally able to understand that Charlie only did all this because of him. The ambitious dreams Lucifer had was what inspired Charlie to believe that people in hell can be redeemed. It's obvious by this point in the show that Charlie knows that having more or less doesn't care about redeeming sinners. But she only keeps trying because she learned from Lucifer that her goals are worth fighting for, regardless of how unrealistic they may seem. This is where Lucifer and Charlie finally begin to connect, where they can understand each other more and find out that they both want the same thing. They want each other's love, support, and dreams more than anything. The ending to the song is by far one of the best endings to a song out of this show. It's just so powerful with stellar animation and an overall emotional climax. This doesn't necessarily fix their problems, but it does help them learn to embrace each other and accept each other's love. More than anything, it is going at the bottom of the S tier. Oh yeah, um, I guess this is the part where I put more than anything reprise and, uh, yeah, it's going in C tier. It's a cute song, but I kinda feel like it was just thrown in there for taggy content. Which is fine, I don't mind their relationship, but it feels like there should've been more on-screen time dedicated to just them before the song. Dearly beloved, it is my pleasure to say unto thee, Welcome to heaven, oh, with a virtuous resign. Welcome to Heaven is definitely the most has-been hotel song ever. It's just kind of there. Given how we're introduced to Heaven, this song makes sense. But at the same point, I kind of just don't feel anything from the song. It's not clever in its lyrics, it's not super smart with its visuals, and it just doesn't have much deeper meaning behind it. It only really means anything because it's a contrast of Hell is Forever, which perfectly depicts how heaven functions behind what we see in Welcome to Heaven. Uh, I guess I like the faces Vaggy gives during the song, and the angel loud panting at the end was kind of funny. But yeah, the song is just not good to me. Putting it in D tier. Hell is forever, then heaven must be alive. If angels can do okay, if I'm being honest, I wish this was the last song of the season. Because that's exactly what it feels like. This song feels like the final boss battle of songs in a musical. Going through all different characters and different phases of the song. Like, just when you think the song is winding down, it just picks it back up again somewhere else. 
It's a climactic conclusion of everything the plot of the season has been building up to, and it works spectacularly. The song doesn't really start to pick up until we hit Loot and Adam's part, because that's when it feels like a real courtroom argument translated into song form perfectly. The debate on if a sinner should be redeemed, the accidental reveal of the extermination to all of heaven, and the reaction to said reveal coming from unaware angels, and the setup for the consequences behind the extermination in heaven is flawless. With such a rising and visceral tone, incredible lyrics, and a jaw-dropping conclusion, this song feels like the epic conclusion of the season. While it's still understandably the best song of the show to a lot of people, it still goes below Lose a Baby and Poison for me. Out for love, 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 love. Think of who you care about. Okay, now I'm starting to think that Carmela Carmine is just making me feel things I shouldn't be feeling for an animated demon woman. Out for Love, much like whatever it takes, has been unrecognized a lot by other fans. I think it's still a good song, though. Aside from Carmilla's beautiful voice and animation, I think she is the perfect candidate to inspire Vaggy to fight with a real purpose. To embrace her fears and the fact that she was an exorcist and use it to her advantage. To use everything she can so that she can fight for the ones she loves. While I do enjoy the song and think it's an overall good song to listen to, I feel like the song was a missed opportunity for a duet with Vaggy and Carmilla. Whatever it takes could have been the precursor for the real duet with these two as they sing about the essence of fighting with purpose. Maybe Vaggy could interrupt Carmilla's verses and express her fear of being herself due to how it could affect her relationship with Charlie, or how nervous she is about standing up to the exorcist at all because she was nearly killed the last time. I don't know man, get creative with it. Don't just swing me along by keeping Vaggy silent thinking she's about to drop a verse only to say nothing. Out For Love isn't a bad song by any means, but it does have a lot of wasted potential. Going at the top of B tier. When Adam brings the battle here, I must appear like I'm ready for this. Okay, I'm sorry, Charlie. I really wanted to convince myself that this song would be outside of B tier, but I simply can't. I at least like that this song is used to build Charlie's confidence to lead against the extermination. She grows out of a shell a little bit and tries to get people to help that she wouldn't go for otherwise. She starts off trying to have the cannibals see things her way, but sooner embraces their hostility as a means to defeat the exorcists. So yeah, she has a very good song about growing her confidence as a leader and as a princess of hell. Not to mention, Alistair and Rosie's part pretty much carry a lot of the song's quality personally. Just like with It Starts With Sorry, it's one of those songs that work for the purpose of a story. But as far as how it works otherwise, it's fine. I think the song goes on for a little longer than what it needs to be, and while I do like Alistair and Rosie's parts, they kind of overstay their welcome in the song, going right before Out For Love. The stage is wrecked, the crowd is gone, but by God, Charlie, the show, it must go on. Finale, while not as climactic or as impactful as you didn't know, still serves as a very satisfying ending song. It would have been all too easy to think about the pure destruction that the exorcist caused and how far they've come, similar to Charlie Sard's song. But instead, it takes the time to talk about the future of the hotel and hell itself. They instead sing about the rebuilding of the hotel and bringing in more sinners than ever, and I think it's a very smart conclusion for the show to end on. Everyone does a good job on their individual parts, and they all harmonize extremely well together. I also like how the song uses a different rendition of Happy Day in Hell to inspire Charlie. At the start, the song was used as a sort of Charlie having unrealistic goals behind what she wants out of Hell. But using it here, it becomes more appropriate to Charlie's goals, and it feels more obtainable because of how much Charlie has convinced others in her pursuit of redemption. But let's be honest, everyone loves this song for Vox and Alice's part, because it is by far the best part of the song. The song uses the theme of looking towards the future of Hell by showing the darker aspects of it. How the battle with the Exorcist has given Vox and the rest of the Vs to rise to the top and become the true overlords of Hell. Then, we see the buildup for the real antagonist of the show. Alistair's verse in the song is haunting. It shows just how willing he is to overthrow the rest of the overlords restrained by whatever deal he made. The inner workings he'll do now that most of Hell thinks he's dead. And how determined he is to find a way out of his deal to overthrow all of Hell and become the puppeteer. This song is not only good for story purposes, but immensely catchy with exciting lyrics and performances with a climactic feud with all. Finale is going in A tier, right above Stay Gone. It might not be a masterpiece, but it is an exceptional final song. And with that, the official has been hotel songs have been ranked. Now all that's left is the pilots. 
I kind of wanted to save the pilots for the end of the list because it has a totally different feel from season 1 song. Anyways, here are the rankings for the pilot songs, starting with... At the end of the rainbow, there's happiness. Okay, listen. I think that I'm Chasing with Rainbows is a better introduction song than Happy Day in Hell. Though I will say, a lot of it comes from the visual language that is presented along with this song. Despite being an indie animation, there is some true identity behind the art style of the show in general, but more so in this opening song. The animation supports the lyrics perfectly to present Charlie's struggles of following her dreams and wanting a better life for the demons. It's a relatively short song, and most of it is helped by the animation, but I think it does a great job at introducing Charlie's aspirations, hopes, and overall fear that she has at following those aspirations and hope of hers. That and I have to give credit to the beautiful performance of Elsie Lovelock, who was the singing voice of Charlie, while Jill Harris was a speaking voice. I'm Always Chasing Rainbows is a bit more melodramatic and dreary than Happy Day in Hell, but it feels fitting given that this is before Charlie really opens up the hotel. So I think this would be going at A tier right above Respectless. So why you you I think this song is at least around the same as to how I feel with Happy Day in Hell. Though this is obviously a Charlie who's a little more naive and new to the idea of redeeming sinners in hell. Regardless, much like Happy Day in Hell, this song is very upbeat and exciting. I like how the song keeps switching between slow moments of Charlie singing about how good her hotel will be, to intense and fast-paced moments where she lists off how all the terrible people in hell can change for the better. I don't really have too many thoughts about this song, honestly. I think it's a good transition from I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, where Charlie starts to feel more confident in her abilities. And overall, just a pretty decent song about how all these filthy, terrible, garbage demons in hell might have a chance of redemption. I'll say this is in the same placement as Happy Day in Hell. You have a dream you wish to tell, and it's just laughable, but hey kid, what the hell? Truthfully, having an old-timey folk song with Alistair is something I feel like was severely missed in the original show. Gabriel C. Brown brings so much charisma and wit to the character in the song. I mean, hell, if he can make a song about seagulls, he can make any song work. You're psycho wiener. I think that the song itself fits well within the character of Alistair. It has so much spunk and personality with its music and its lyrics. Though I think I would have appreciated more of a sinister undertone within the lyrics. Because it's pretty obvious beforehand that Alistair has his own personal reasons behind helping Charlie with the hotel. And the song could have been used to show at least a little bit more behind it. I'll put it in B tier, mainly because it's also cut short by Serpentius. Fucking hell, I am really pushing the age restriction rules in this video. Then again, it's not like YouTube is great with keeping it consistent. Addict is a song that I think works a hell of a lot more when you put it in tandem with Poison. Because this song works as Angel tries to deny his flaws and tries to embrace the life he has now. However, Poison is Angel coming to terms with his mistakes and airs out his want for escape. By itself though, it's still a great song. I think him duetting with Cherry Bomb works more than just them having good harmonies, because Cherry expresses her want for Angel to get better by practically destroying the thing that Angel has been consuming that's leading to his pain. It's clear that she accepts that Angel wants to get better, so she sticks around when he's visibly hurting. She's just not ready for that lifestyle herself. Having Angel and Cherry duet together also works because of the contrast these two have. While Cherry has fully embraced the destructive and insane life she has, Angel is only accepting it because he feels obligated to. This song perfectly shows not only the relationship between Angel and Cherry Bomb, but also the escapism that Angel is feeling. The only thing I don't particularly enjoy is the techno beats in between their singing parts. I don't know, just didn't necessarily hit as hard as the other melodies in the song. Though it is made up for it in the ending of the song. And my god does it hit hard. It's not as good as Poison for me, but I still think it's a good precursor to it. Going at the top of A tier. Evil opportunity killer, Alistair! Yep, that's right, I'm reviewing Insane as well. No, I don't care that this song is a canon to Has Been Hotel, it's canon to mine and Alistair's heart nonetheless. Insane is pretty much exactly what I wanted from a proper theme song for Alistair. I think for such a charismatic character that has a lot of showmanship like Alistair, this song fits perfectly. It not only gives us a little insight on Alistair's introduction to hell, but just the intelligence behind his insanity. 
This song perfectly encapsulates Alistair's insanity, genius, and antagonistic nature. Also, it is just so goddamn catty. Just listen to this. And now we have the power to breathe all of you in entertaining fire. The instruments are also incredibly well used with this song too. I didn't think the piano would work wonders with the techno beat, but I think it does a good job at selling the insanity behind the charm of the character. Seriously, Gabriel C. Brown, you fucking cooked as Alistair in this song. Going in S tier, around the same place as Hell is Forever. <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think this song is a perfect ending to the has-been hotel pilot. According to Gabriel Brown, this song was written pretty much around the time they found out they were all being recasted, but refused to share it until the official cast was announced out of respect. Which I think is highly commendable and shows what earnest people the cast behind the show is. And I think that this song perfectly reflects that. It's all about sad, yet cheerful goodbyes. In canon, it's regarding to the visitors of the hotel. That despite that the residents might feel sad about leaving, that it's only temporary. That they're always welcome back, and they are loved by the workers at said hotel. But outside canon... It's about the goodbye of this cast as they were recasted for the official release of has -Been Hotel. And it's... Real emotional given that context. It's overall just a true love letter of the pilot and the amount of work the entire team did behind it. Gabriel also made it clear that Viv always wanted a Broadway cast, so it was kind of inevitable that they were getting recasted. So they eventually knew the day would come, and they still put their hearts and soul into this pilot and this final song. It's a bittersweet final song, but a satisfying one nonetheless. Absolutely going in A tier. And that's all, every single canon and non-canon song of Has Been a Hotel. Now, I'm not super inclined when it comes to music, but I just wanted to talk about how much I simply adore the work they put into these songs. They're all made with the intentions of not just being good songs, but good for the purpose of developing the story, characters, and themes of the show. Pretty much what I think the standard for musicals should be, seeing as how their format is centered around the songs. Has Been Hotel has truly changed an entire generation of musical lovers or just people who love music in general. And a huge thank you to the creators behind Has Been Hotel, including the composers of these songs such as Andrew Underberg and Perry Grip. And thank you to the pilot cast of Has Been Hotel. Your performances were spectacular and you surely will be missed.